Welcome to the tutorial for the Bexhill Shorts. I'm going to start by prepping these patch pockets, which are of course optional. I'm using a cotton twill, a gabardine, which has a twill weave on one side. So you can see I've marked with across the wrong side of my fabric so that I don't get confused. And I'm just going to fold over the one centimeter seam allowance and then fold again and give it a press. And now I'm going to stitch that down to make a nice edge to the top of my pocket. There we go. Then I'm going to fold back my centimeter seam allowances around the remaining edges and press them in place. There we go. That's all prepped and ready to go. So now we're going to put the pocket onto the trouser. Here we go. This is my back. And you can see I've marked these five points with a little dot of chalk on the wrong side of my fabric. So I'm just going to mark through that you can see with a pin to the right side. I'm just going to use three anchor points on here, but there are five if you want to use the five. And I'm just going to place my pocket in line with those. There we go and pin it in place. Before I stitch it on. There we go. So take these other pins out. And I'm just going to stitch very simply around the outside edge. You can do all kinds of fancy stitch work on pockets. Get creative with your top stitching and have lovely designs. If you do a denim pair, do a nice design on your pocket. But I'm purely doing the simplest version here. Pivoting at the corners and the points. Back tack at the start on the finish. There we go, nice pocket. Okay, so next we're going to do the front pockets here. So here are my pieces. Again, I've marked the wrong side with a cross in chalk. So let's work out which pocket goes to which. This is the pocket bag that we're putting on. It's the one with the diagonal line across the top. So right sides together, matching up those lines. Pop a couple of pins in and stitch the centimetre seam allowance back tack before you start and off you go and a back tack to finish there we are so centimetre sewn the seam allowance and I'm going to just leave that seam allowance where it is and fold the pocket bag over the top and I'm going to stitch close to the edge here on the actual pocket bag. Nice bit of under stitching to give a lovely crisp finish to that pocket edge. There we go, nice neat sewing. I'm going to give that a press. So now we're going to take the front pocket section and our front trouser with the pocket bag on. You can see there's various notches here for zips and where the pocket meets the seam. So we're going to lay that on top of there like so. Turn it over and you want to match these curves up. They should match pretty well. So just the two pocket sections, start pinning your curve. And you're going to sew those two pieces of pocket bag together, a centimetre seam allowance again. Here we go, starting at the top. Let's go all the way around. So 
So there we go. That's the inside of our pocket done now. So it should look a bit like that. And we're just going to overlock or zigzag, neaten the edge of the pocket now. There we go. And then the last job to do is to line up all these edges nice and neatly. And stitch them all together so that they form just one piece. So it'll be easier when you come to stitch the pieces on. So I'm just doing it just within the centimetre seam allowance. And if you pin them exactly edge to edge, you should end up with a nice space to put your hand in your pocket. It shouldn't be completely flat. So you'll be able to get your hands in your pockets. There we go. No need to back tack. It's just to, to keep it all together. There we are, a nice space for your hand, one pocket. So now we're going to sew some side seam and inside legs. Um, I'm putting my zip on the right hand side of my trousers, my shorts. So I've marked, you can see I've overlocked before I'm sewing to just the vertical seams. And I've done the same on the back. And I've put the notch on this side because this is going to be my right hand side. That's my zip side. So. As my right hand side is my zip side, I've got my right front and my right back and I'm just going to do the inside leg. So you can see I've pre-overlocked the inside leg seam and the crutch seam and the side seam. Now this is the other side, this is my left leg and I'm going to stitch up the whole of my outside side seam here, look. Matching those. And I'm going to stitch up the inside leg as well. So I've left the right hand side side seam open for my zip basically at this point. So I'm stitching down that inside leg on the right leg and the outside and the inside on the left leg. Here we go. The usual centimetre seam allowance and you can see I've just stitched up that inside leg on the right one. I'm going to press that seam open and on my left leg I've sewn up all of the side seam and all of the inside leg and I'm going to open those seams and give those a press too. There we go. So next you can see I've turned my left trouser leg right side out and I've got my right trouser leg here laying on top of it and I'm going to match the crutch seams and then I'm going to pin the front crutch matching those curves nicely and the back and I'm going to stitch all the way around using my centimetre seam allowance again Make sure those seams are open to avoid bulk. Back tack, start and finish. Here we go. Take these pins out now. Let's have a look. So there we go. It looks like a pair of shorts now, doesn't it? I've got a whole left leg that's all enclosed and I've got the right side seam open, ready for my zip insertion. And I'm going to press these crutch seams open just at the top, just so that it lies flat across your back and your tummy. There we go. So you can see I've just pressed it open before it gets to the curvy bit. So next up is the yolks. I've got two yolks, an inner and an outer yoke. Again, the wrong side is interfaced on this underside yoke, this inner yoke, and it's not on the top yoke, on the outer yoke. And I've put front and back, and I've put a Z where my zip is, so that I know I'm sewing up the left side of my yoke outer and the left side of my yoke inner. So I've stitched the centimetre again. I'm going to press these seams open 
and then I'm going to place them right sides together. Pin that seam together. And because I've made a matching pair, they will be exactly the same length. Okay, so now at the ends, I'm just going to fold this interfaced yoke back just over, a little over the centimetre seam, and that's maybe 1.2 mil, something like that, as I stitch. So a centimetre from the edge again, all the way around the top of your waistline, turning that end over as you come to it. Okay, so there you go, you can see my little foldy back bits. Just makes it easier when you come to put your zip in and uh, neaten your yoke. Here we go, I'm clipping every couple of centimetres, every inch or so, and trimming down this interfaced inner yoke. Do that all the way around, all along the length. And then you want to keep that seam allowance flat and fold your yoke over it. This is your interface yoke, your inner yoke. And then you're going to stitch through all the seam allowance and the inner yoke to keep that seam allowance pressed towards it. There we go, nice bit of under stitching. So that will now fold nicely and give it a quick press. So there we go, a nice waistline. Attaching the yoke. So here are my shorts. This is my yoke. I'm going to open it up so that I've got the front yoke on the, of the outer yoke right sides to my shorts and I'm going to pin that side seam together, yoke side seam to short side seam and I'm going to find the centre of my yoke and pin that to the centre front. Do make sure you've got your front yoke on your front shorts and your back yoke on your back shorts before you try and sew it on. And then, oh, I'm going to zigzag that little edge there, the side of the yoke there. I forgot to do that earlier. So that's the front yoke pinned. Now I'm going to, there we go, I've zigged it. Just pin that last bit there. Now it's done and then I will show you pinning the other side. Oh look, and there's notches obviously to match there that should match. That was is how you'll know you've got your back and your front on the right way round. Your back yoke has double notches and your front not um your front yoke has single notches. So I found the centre again there, matching that up with the centre back seam. There you go, it's one of your one of your double notches there, they're quite wide apart. And of course I've got to do this side as well with the overlocker before I start sewing. So once you're all pinned, take some time over this and stitch a centimetre from the edge. If you're worried about sewing curve to curve, then you can always tack it in place as well. You don't have to just rely on the pins. There we go. So that's my yoke seamed onto my shorts, the outer yoke to the shorts, right sides together. I'm going to trim off these little bits and bobs that are hanging here and I'm going to just clip into the seam allowance every couple of centimetres or so again. Trim down my seams, just 
just give it a tidy up but I'm not going to grade it this time but I am going to press all that seam allowance up inside the yoke. There we go, all pressed upwards towards the waistband so that inner yoke can nice, lie nice and flat over the top. Fabulous. Now for the zip. So I've got a concealed zip here. I don't know how well you can see it as it's black, but this is the right side of it. It's got the opener on and that's the coil side, so that's the wrong side. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to roll that coil out and I'm going to give it a press. Now, you'll know you've done it correctly when it all curls up. So it all folds in on itself when you do it up again. So next I'm going to get my shorts. Now I've got this right sides up and my zip is right side up as well. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to pin that tape to that seam allowance. So there's the little stopper there. So you want that little stopper just below the seam. Just pop a couple of pins in. That's where my mark, my chalk mark that I put in when I overlocked. So I didn't lose my notch, my zip notch. And just stitch the tape on the edge to the seam allowance and stop at that chalk mark or that notch. I've put my zipper foot on for this. And I'm just going to stitch it on there. Just to hold it in place, just makes it a little bit easier for this next step. Okay, so that's it. That's just the tape stitched on. So now we're going to get right in, going to pull that coil over and get stitch as close to it as we can without actually stitching on it. So make sure your needles are across as much as it will go. And again, stitching down to that chalk mark that I've left there. So you can see there's two rows of stitching now, one that's quite close to the coil and one that's just holding the tape down. So if we do the zip up, you can see that's the first half of our zip. Now we're going to put the other side of the zip in. So back to right sides of trousers out again, zip right side out, undo your zip a little bit and place that tape right side to right side, the coil towards the right and the tape on the seam allowance, that little stopper needs to come just under that seam at the top. Pop some pins in. Again, do tack if you're uh, needing to. And I'm going to stop again at that little chalk mark, which is where my zip notch was. So just on the edge again, just to hold the tape down onto the seam allowance so it doesn't move around so much when it comes to putting that vital stitch in next to the coil. There we go, that's the first stitch line. As you can see, nowhere near the coil, but it just holds it in place. So now I'm going to move that coil over and stitch next to it. There we are, so I'm folding it out as I go, which should be super easy as you've pressed it open. And stop at the chalk notch. That's it, that's your second side of your zip in. Brilliant. Now... We're going to just untwiddle this bottom bit here. Right, it's twiddling. There we go. Untwiddle it and then do your zip up. Make sure it's as you wish it to be before you move on to stitching your seam. So we're going to turn these inside out again now. Lay your side seams beneath your zip together. 
I'm going to start stitching from where your stitching stopped for the zip. So again, pin it downwards towards the hem. Stitch down. There we go. Nice little back tack. And then off we go. Centimetre seam allowance as always. There you go. You can see I started that where I'd finished. Take the pins out, open that up and give it a little press. And then we'll have a little look and see how this zip looks. There we go. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to sink stitch my yoke because I like things nice and flat and not too bulky. But there's other ways you can do it. You can turn up your raw edge and sort of bag it out, hand stitch it all. But I'm going to do it this way. So just going to pin my yoke to, well, my inner yoke to my outer yoke, really. Make sure my seam allowance is nice and up. Make sure it's all lying as flat as possible as I go round, so there's no bubbles. Match those side seams. Again, keeping it all as flat as possible so there's no ruckles or crinkles. Plenty of pins. Again, you can tack it if you'd like to. That's absolutely fine. And I'm going to stitch from the right side. I'm going to start a centimetre in and I'm going to stitch in that ditch. The space between the yoke and the shorts. I'm lining that little line up in the centre of my machine foot with that ditch and just going for it. And that will effectively hold the yokes together and make it a bit less bulky than trying to sort of bag it out. There we are, you can see I've stitched in there as close as I could get. That looks pretty flat. Let's take all those pins out. And that's just the bit that you're going to hand sew later. So I do like a fly guard. However, it is optional, um, but I'm going to talk you through it. Right sides together, stitch the short ends a centimetre in. Clip the corner, give it a quick grade, turn it through and you need to give it a press. So wiggle those corners out. There we go. Now I'm just going to overlock or zigzag the edge or neaten it. And then I'm going to attach it to my zip. I like to put mine on the front zip tape. So I'm just going to open this up. Oh, I've stitched a little bit too far across there. So I'm just going to loosen that. Just one stitch. There we go. And then I'm going to lay that onto the tape, making sure the nice finished edge comes to the top of the yoke. Pop a couple of pins in and then I'm literally just going to stitch it to the edge of that zip tape. There we go, all the way down. Past the zip stopper. Oops, a little back tack. So that's in. So that will all tuck back in as it did before. But I also want to secure it at the other end to the other side of the zip tape. 
So we'll just pop a pin in here for the minute. That will be hand stitched. So let's hand stitch this little bit here. I just use a whip stitch. You can stitch it into those stitches that you've just done, or you can just stitch it through the single layer of fly guard. All neatened off. And there's the bit the other side that you obviously want to do the same with. So before I finish with my zip, I'm going to do that bit that I mentioned before where there you go, I've got the zip tape. It's the other side of the zip tape, so not it's the left side, not the right side. You can see it there just going to stitch it to that fly guard fabric only a centimetre just to hold it there we go look you can see it's just a tiny bit but that just means that um, when you've got it all zipped up nicely you're not going to put any strain on the bottom of that zip because that's the bit that always goes so it's just the hems left to do now. There we go. So I'm going to get my tape measure slightly nibbled at the end. We've got five centimetres allowance for this. So I'm going to turn it over inside a centimetre and then I'm going to turn it another four centimetres and sort of press it all up so that it's a bit easier to stitch. I'll know that it's all even. There we go. So I'll just show you that inside. I've folded that a centimetre and then four centimetres. And I'm going to just stitch it on the edge. Again, you can do a double fancy stitch if you want to. Do some nice edge stitching, top stitching, contrasting thread, something fancy if you want to. There we go. All hemmed, just needs a press. Fabulous. So that's all pressed there. And barring some scraggly bits that I need to just <laughs> trim off, you should have something that looks like this. Enjoy.